Ever thought what capital markets are all about? What is the whole hype about Wall Street, stocks, bonds, inflation, and all those mind-boggling jargons? So, here we are, to help you cut to the chase. Welcome to the interactive session on Introduction to Capital Markets, brought to you by Ion Education. Let's start by breaking the word up. If we said the word capital, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I am not talking about our country's capital here. We are talking from a business point of view. So, for most of us, it's going to be money, and that's correct. Money is the primary base for the word capital. And markets, well, markets refer to a place where products and services are bought and sold between buyers and sellers. Putting the words together, capital markets are markets where money is exchanged between people who have excess of it to those who are in need. Now, when we say excess, he may not be a snobbish guy with a fleet of super luxury cars and a lot of cash. It could be anyone having a regular lifestyle with some money for which he has no immediate use. Similarly, someone who is in need may not be a beggar on the road. They are companies or organizations who are already doing well in their business, but require more money to expand operations. Ion Example Ace, an industrialist in the textile business. Ace manages to clinch a deal with Gucci to export textile cloth to their manufacturing unit. However, his company, Ace Textiles Incorporated, is currently functioning at full capacity and has no room for new orders. If Ace Textiles Incorporated takes up this contract, then he will have to set up another industrial unit, which would cost 10 million rupees. Ace can go to the bank to borrow money but the bank will charge a high interest rate. Chances are, even if Ace can afford the interest rates, banks will scrutinize Ace before lending to him and ask him hundreds of questions just like our parents do before lending us money. There is another option. Ace can make his company go public and get listed on the stock markets. This means that he is reaching out to the public for investments in his company in exchange for part ownership of the company. Public here means the common people who would invest in Ace as they believe in his business. Got it? Still awake? Yes? No? Maybe? Anybody? Another common question is, what is a share? Let me start by explaining that shares, scripts, equity, and stocks are jargons that actually mean the same thing. So, next time you hear someone saying any of the above, you know they are referring to the same exact thing. Ion Example Ace and his friends are going out for lunch and decide to order a pizza of 10 slices. That will cost them 100 rupees. How much is each of them supposed to pay for their share of two slices? 10, 20, 30, 40? Interaction But Ace wants to eat some more. He is willing to pay a premium of 20% and buy another slice at 12 rupees. His friend, Eric, agrees to stay hungry and instead earn the profit from the sale. Now, this makes Ace the majority holder for the pizza, so he can decide the toppings for the pizza. He likes pepperoni, so that's what it's going to be. But three others dislike pepperoni and decide to gang up against the decision. Together, they are 60% of the shareholders, and so the group, as a whole, has more control on decision-taking, and now it's going to be barbecue chicken, just like the three friends wanted. Ace is pissed off and is compelled to agree. Replicate the example in the real market, and you understand that buying a share of a company is like buying a slice of a very large pizza. The movements of the markets are controlled by demand and supply. Rise in demand leads to a rise in the prices, and vice versa. Similarly, excess of supply leads to fall in prices, and vice versa. This is where the investors make their profits and losses from the investments made depending upon their purchase price. Well, maybe we've got your mouth watering for pizza. Too bad, though. We're an education company, not a pizzeria. Can't help you there. So, let's just continue with the learning, shall we? Moving on the need of capital markets in an economy. Ion Example 
Have you ever been to a vegetable market? You go to a vendor to buy vegetables. But my question is, why do we buy vegetables? We all know that planting a seed is not that difficult. Why should we pay for something we can do ourselves? The best answer to this is opportunity cost. Simply put, <laughs> come on, you've got better things to do than grow vegetables. All due respect to farmers, you guys are doing a great job. After all, without them, we wouldn't be able to have the pizza. This means that we are willing to pay a certain cost for buying products or services instead of making them ourselves. Similarly, the capital markets allow investors to invest in companies they believe in, rather than starting similar businesses. But how do you believe in a company? Time for another ION example. Ace saw a documentary on rising oil prices and realized that someday oil may get so expensive that common man may find it difficult to consume it on a regular basis. The future is going to be about renewable sources of energy like solar, wind, or even tidal energy. Amongst all these, Ace believes that wind energy may be the next big thing. Is he expected to leave his current job and start setting up windmills all around the world? He may not have the time or resources to do something like that. He wants to be part of the booming industry, but does not want to physically be involved in the operations. Capital markets allow him to do that by investing in shares of Suzlon Energy, one of the world's largest wind power companies. At the CMP, current market price, as of the 2nd of January 2012, it is trading at 18.10 rupees on the BSE, Bombay Stock Exchange. It is cheaper than a burger from McDonald's. Okay, wakey wakey, do you understand so far, yes or no? Let's just go off topic for a minute to help you understand why you need to invest your money in the first place. Why can't we just spend most of our money like so many Americans who sometimes spend even more than what they actually earn by using a credit card? The reason that you don't want to be like them is because you need to save a certain amount of money for emergencies. What if a tsunami was to wash your house away or something took away any other basic requirement when you were older or retired? But come on, let's face it. Are you really on this planet to just live with the basic requirements? We all have dreams. Dream cars, dream homes, dream everything. Those dreams can come true, but not by luck. Well, it, unless you're a lottery winner. These dreams will remain dreams if you're one of the people who decides to buy new pairs of shoes or Armani jackets on the day you get your paycheck. Ion example. Ace got lucky after his graduation. He got himself a job paying 50,000 rupees per month, which is 600,000 rupees or better understood as 6 lakh rupees in a year. Let's assume half of that is spent on living expenses eating, drinking, and partying. He's left with 300,000 rupees or 3 lakhs at the end of the year. The truth is that he can't buy his dream house or the car he wanted, even after 20 years. But his salary will not remain constant forever. At the same time, we can't ignore the fact that inflation is growing at almost 9% in India. So, while you're making all that money, the prices of products and services are rising too. Even if you manage to beat the inflation and double or triple your salary in the next 10 years, you probably won't be able to achieve all of the goals you set out for. The bigger question here is, how do we make sure we don't get trapped in this situation? How do we ensure a better living? The answer is obvious. Just because you are in envy of that guy who comes to college in a BMW since his father is paying for it, don't spend all your hard-earned money by buying super luxury brands. Invest your money. Of course, pampering yourself is good, but don't spend all of it on your funky haircuts and branded clothing. Are we clear up to here? You do see the need to invest your money now, right? All right, so this is where it gets interesting. 
You have some money and you are convinced that you should invest. But where should you invest? How do you know where to put your money? Investments are subjective from individual to individual and depend on various things. The basic distinguishing takes place with the fundamentals, like risk taking ability, time frame for investment, and the amount to be invested. Ion example If you are married and have children, Okay, wait, let's make them children who are about to go to college. You'll probably want to invest in safer assets that provide a reasonable return to sustain the family living. On the other hand, if you are young and unmarried with no children, then you might invest in higher risk investments, which give higher growth prospects, rather than keeping it safe in a bank at only a nominal interest rate. To understand better, we go into the concept of risk and return. Risk is defined as the possibility of someone losing a part or the whole of their capital invested, and return is the amount that can be earned by investing the capital in a certain asset. Let's relate it to poker or any other casino based game. The higher you bet, the higher the gains. But you always have a chance of losing the money you bet. Investments, too, are structured in the same way, but they are not the same as gambling, unless they are based completely on intuition and no research. You can either invest in a large organization like Reliance, which provides good security but not extremely high returns on investment, or invest in smaller companies that you believe have a bright future. However, since it is yet to prove itself, the risk of investment is considerably high, but the ability to rise in value is high as well. But how do you choose a company in the first place? How do you predict a company's future performance? Ion example The world renowned investor, Mr. Warren Buffett, one of the world's wealthiest persons, began investing in the markets at the age of 11. One of his famous investments was Coca Cola. He believed that if he liked drinking Coca Cola and his friends liked it too, there was a good possibility that many others would like the product too, which would finally lead to the growth of the company. Warren Buffett believed in a concept known as value investing, which deals with looking for the value that an organization is creating. This is precisely what you can do to start investing in the markets. Look for companies that add value to your life. And companies that offer products or services that you really believe in. If Domino's delivers the best pizza to your doorstep within 30 minutes and you love the taste every time, then you know that there is great potential in that company. However, what you are looking at in this example are long term investments, which may not make you a millionaire overnight. These are something that will build year on year and finally yield lucrative valuations. Ion example. If you or your parents had invested 10,000 rupees and bought 100 shares of Wipro, a renowned name in the IT industry in 1981, because of the belief in the IT industry, how much do you think it would have been worth in 2005? About 25 years after making the investment. Anyone? 4.13 billion rupees. Or 413 crores. Yes, it's true. If you or your parents had invested a mere 10,000 rupees, you would be driving a Ferrari and living in a beachfront mansion. Even though this example seems so interesting, the fact is that not many people actually stick with a company through the entire journey. Let's assume you buy something for 10,000 rupees, and a few years later, someone offers to buy it from you at 10 million rupees. Would you sell it? If not, would you sell it at a billion rupees? Not many people will have the vision or the belief that their investment may actually rise up to 4.13 billion rupees or 413 crores. A better way of looking at this is that in the capital markets, the actions of any investor is dependent on emotions like hope, fear, and greed. Hope that if he is in a loss, that it may recover, so he should hold on. Fear that the price of an asset may fall. And greed. To capitalize on the possibility of higher profits. Keep these three emotions under control, and you will be on your way to becoming a successful investor in the capital markets. Thank you for watching. Check out the next video.